book haul. Let's go. <laughs> um, we're getting a bit friendly here because I just showered. But also, I don't have the time to wait for my hair to dry, then make this video, and then move on with my day. So, just getting a bit uh, chill. Just chilling here. Um, I went to Amsterdam with a friend of mine uh, and I bought a bunch of books. Uh, the first bookstores that we went to, I didn't buy any books and I was kind of frightened because I um, didn't buy books for like a couple of weeks so that I could buy a lot of books with uh, at our trip to Amsterdam. And uh, so it frightened me a bit that I didn't walk out with any books in the two uh, stores that we went to, especially because one of them was an uh, American bookstore and I thought I was definitely gonna just buy a lot there, but that didn't happen, especially, well, mainly because I didn't want to buy any starts of uh, a theology or just a duology or a series, uh, because I already have quite a couple of those and I don't want to be in several series at a time. So that's why a lot of the books just didn't end up in my bag. Um, but eventually we went to Waterstones. Yes, I did buy a tote bag. Uh, and most of my books I got there. So let's talk about it. The first book that I'm going to start off with is just going to be just at the top of the pile because, well, the the, the cashier put, la, put them all in my bag. So we're just going to grab and see what I end up grabbing. Just close my eyes and then I grabbed Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. It is a shiny edition. Like, hello? Can you see this shine? Can you? Oh. Does this shine? Oh, this does shine a little bit as well. I don't know if you can see it, but this does shine. Maybe I should. Oh, yeah, yeah. Shiny. Um, tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Did I buy it just basically for, for the cover? I mean, it did grab my attention, just the cover itself. I had seen it like a couple of weeks earlier in one of my local bookstores here. And, um, uh, I thought this looks gorgeous. It also reminds me of the movie, the movie title "Everything Everywhere All at Once," and for that association, I just already thought, well, maybe I should buy it. Um, let me read what it's about. Uh, this is not a romance, but it is about love. Two kids meet in a hospital gaming room in 1987. One is visiting her sister, the other is recovering from a car crash. But the days and months are long there. Their love of uh, video gaming becomes a shared world of joy, escape and fierce competition. But all too soon that time is over, fades from view. When the pair spot each other, eight years later in a crowded train station, they are catapulted back to that moment. The spark is immediate and together they get to work on what they love, making games to the light, challenge and immerse players. Finding an inti intimacy in digital world that eludes them in their real lives. Their co collaboration makes them superstars. This is the story of the perfect worlds, Sadie, Sadie maybe, or Sadie, uh, and Sam built. Maybe it's not Sadie. Maybe it should be Sadie, I think. Uh, <laughs> this is the story of the perfect world Sadie and Sam builds, the imperfect world they live in and everything that comes after success, money, fame, duplicity, tragedy. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow takes us on a dazzling imagination quest, imaginative quest as it examines the nature of identity, creativity, disability, failure, the redemption, the redemption. The redemptive possibilities in play and above all our need to connect, to be loved and to love. The back is also gorgeous. Um, gorgeous, gorgeous book. I no, don't normally read uh, mainly romances, 
But I mean, if you've got a cover like this and a body like hers, then I will. Next. Our next book on the pile is Oh, A Gentleman in Moscow. Uh, there were a lot of covers that looked like this. And like two times before I saw this book, I was like, oh my God, is that the book? Because I've had this on my list for like a couple of years now. And I just find the concept intriguing. Um, it might, it it's probably is a horrible time right now because of the war that's going on. Um, but I still find the book intriguing. Uh, and it's a nice cover. Also shiny. Shiny. Um, the portrait of just the back of somebody reminds me of the, the, the painting by Casper uh, uh, David Friedrich. Um, what's it called? Uh, Wanderer above clouds. Above a mountain of clouds or something. Uh, I really like it. Anyway, this story, uh, so I had it on my list for like quite a long while. And now I bought it. They finally had it. This is the first time that I ever have seen it in a store. Okay. Uh, on 20, the 21st, on 20, on the 21st of June, 1922, Count Alexander Rostov, recipient of the Order of St. Andrew, member of the Jokey club master of the hunt is escorted out of the kremlin across red square and through the elegant revolving doors of the hotel metropole deemed an unrepentant deemed an unrepentant unrepentant deemed an unrepentant aristocrat by the bolshevik tri tribunal <laughs> Uh, the count has been sentenced to house arrest indefinitely, but instead of his usual suite, he must uh, he must now live in an attic room while Russia undergoes decades of tumultuous upheaval. Can a life without luxury be the richest of all? I just find it really intriguing a couple of years ago that this is just a guy who used to be in power and is now just stuck somewhere. If and. I uh, can only like watch out of the room, uh, out of the window. I just found it really intriguing. And well, last years we were kind of in lockdown and I hadn't thought about this book. And now I'm thinking, well, I was in lockdown. I couldn't leave my room. Um, but I think this is quite different. And I hope it will be very intriguing. Oh. It's a bit dirty. That's so sad. Maybe it's because of the bag. The bag is black. I hope not. Anyway. A gentleman in Moscow. I have is Before the Coffee Gets Cold. Also a shiny edition. Did I only buy shiny editions? It's not true, but very much so. Before the Coffee Gets Cold. Um... It's, I think it's my second translation of um, Eastern. Is it Eastern? I don't know. Eastern authors? Just not West authors. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's... What's it about? Well, I uh, selected it because I think Jack Edwards um, recommended it. And I found the concept really intriguing. And so why not? And this is also the first time that I've seen this first edition in a, a bookstore. I've, I have seen the second edition uh, in several bookstores, but not the first. So what, what is that about? Anyway, before the coffee gets cold. In a small back alley in Tokyo, there is a cafe uh, which has been serving carefully brewed coffee for more than 100 years. But this coffee shop offers its customers a unique experience, the chance to travel back in time. And before the coffee gets cold, we meet four visitors, each of whom is making, is hoping to make use of the coffee, uh, is hoping to make use of the cafes to 
time traveling offer in order to confront the lover who left them, receive a letter from their husband whose memory has begun to fade, see their sister one last time and meet the daughter they never got the chance to know. But the journey into the past does not come without risks. Customers must sit in a particular seat, they cannot leave the cafe, and finally they must return to the present before the coffee gets cold. I'm gonna try and uh, pronounce the author's name. I apologize, but I'm going to try. Um, Toshikasu Kawash Kawagushi Their Love uh, Wait Toshi Toshikasu Kawagushi Beautiful Moving Story explores the age old question. What would you change if you could travel back in time? More importantly, who would you want to meet? Maybe for one last time. Before the coffee gets cold. Oh, the alchemist! It's pretty, right? I always like... It's also shiny! It's also shiny. Did I... It's also shiny. I did not plan this. Anyway, the alchemist. I think it's a classic. Um... I just found it intriguing and it's also short so I'm, I'm kind of a bit terrified by big classics so just to um, get better with my fear of big classics I read small classics to then build up to bigger ones um, but also enjoy the small ones because they might be just as good or even better than the big ones um, dreams are made to be followed life is meant to be lived some books are meant to be read, loved and passed on. The Alchemist is one of those books. The Alchemist is the story of a shepherd boy from the Spanish region of Andalusia who journeys to the exotic markets of North Africa and then into the Egyptian desert where a faithful encounter with the Alchemist awaits him. That's what the story is about. Yeah. He just meets a bunch of people while he's traveling. I just love that. It's a big one. Oh my god. Good omens. Oh my god. Okay. This is good omens. As you can see, I already have good omens right there. Uh, but this is uh, the script edition. And this is the first time that I had seen it. The script edition. In a bookstore. And um, I really love the show and the show uh, convinced me to read the book and then I uh, got to know, uh, I got to read from Neil Gaiman and now he's my, one of my favorite authors and uh, I saw this and I found it really beautiful and um, I just went through it a little bit and it also has scenes that were cut and uh, that didn't make it in uh, but uh, the main thing that and for context those who don't know Good Omens was written by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett Terry Pratchett is very well known and um, he has uh, made the Discworld uh, series I haven't read it yet, but he's very well known for that. And um, uh, he has passed away a couple of years ago. And uh, that was before the TV show was made. And uh, they um, they uh, put like a uh, uh, um, producer's chair with his name on it um, at the set. And they also put his... A hat and his scarf uh, at one of the uh, sets where they shoot scenes at the bookstore and um, I just really loved it it was when I heard from heard about it I really it really made me cry I just found it so beautiful that humans can honor each other in that way and it's the most gorgeous thing I could ever imagine and um, I opened this book and I looked at the 
the four thingy by accident and it just says this I mean in that moment tears came into my eyes and I was like now I just can't leave it here now I need to have it and I bought it and it also it it um, makes me even more emotional because it's just his uh, his first name not his last name and that just I just find it gorgeous. I just find it beautiful. Such, such an honest, beautiful, wholesome, perfect um, gesture. It's so human to honor and love each other in this way. And I find it gorgeous. I just, it makes me so emotional because I think it's the most beautiful thing ever. Um, I'm not emotional right now, but that's because I cried about it like three times already. So, um, so now I also got the script. <laughs> um, it's very beautiful. I think this cover is way more beautiful than the one I have, but that's fine. Um, I think moving on. I'm not sure there's any book left in the... Oh no, there's not. No book left in the Waterstones tote bag. That was it for Wattstones. Um, but we also went to a second hand store uh, called um, The Book Exchange. Oh, it is it has both sides. Whoa, this is the first time a tote bag has both sides printed on. That's so nice. And uh, my goal was uh, for this trip also uh, at the second hand store was my goal to um, buy uh, Edgar Allan Poe book because Jack Edwards loves them and he says uh, I'm a Edgar <laughs> uh, I'm a Edgar Allan Ho and I just I word puns just I just love word puns so I just needed to find out more and um, I think his writing style might really be enjoyable for me. So I bought the only one that they had there and that's this one. Um, and I love thriller things and mystery things. I love such shit so might be interesting. Tales of mystery and imagination. It's just a bunch of his collections, a bunch of his short collection, short story collection. It's a bunch of his short stories, I think. Uh, including Poe's most terrifying, grotesque and haunting short stories, Tales of Mystery and Imagination is the ultimate collection of the infamous author's Masabre works? Macabre works? Uh, focusing on the internal conflict of individuals, the power of the dead over the living and psycholo psychological explorations of darker human emotions the collection features some of his most popular tales the gold book is the only story that was significant within his lifetime whereas the black cat the pit and the pe pendulum and the murders in rue margot in the rue margot um, became more widely read after his death and those are other books that I have bought. So, successful. Very successful. Thank you for watching. And uh, I will keep you updated when I read some of them. Just maybe in a short thingy. Or maybe I will. one of the books will be good enough just to make an entire video about. So, um, hope you enjoyed it. And I sure enjoyed it. I'm very glad I got this book, these books at home now. Anyway, bye.